Hey folks, welcome to Greybeard Adventures. My name is Eric, thanks for tuning in. I've got something really fun for you guys today. We're gonna burn a lot of stuff. So the plan is, head away from the lake here, we're gonna head up into the bush, see what we can find, put them to the test, see which ones are the best type of kindling, and uh, I'll explain the methodology we're gonna use there in just a minute. But right now, let's go get her done. Let's do this. We're gonna be looking for things like pine cones, pine needles, dried out leaves, lichen, an old man's beard, birch bark. Got a nice piece here, look at that. Dried ferns and all other manner of flammable goodies. Let's get to our experiment. One thing I'd like to try is balsam gum. One way to know if you have a balsam tree, you can find blisters like this. They're full of uh, balsam gum. Another way is to look at its foliage. You can see here, the needles actually grow side to side, so they're, they're flat. They don't grow around the branch. So that's another indication that it's balsam, and they're not as prickly as uh, spruce or pine or anything. We're gonna collect some of this sap. We're just gonna poke right into it and see it oozing out there. There we go. Just cover the end of our stick. All right, everybody, we're ready to begin our big experiment. So uh, we've just had a pile of rain. I know I'm not too concerned about starting a fire anywhere, but nevertheless, we'll play it safe. I've got a nice big fire pit here. Plan is we'll take each item, uh, we'll place it here in the middle, give it a quick burn, see what happens. Like I said, this is a very scientific experiment, so we are going to measure how long it takes to light, how long the substance stays lit for. We're gonna then imagine how many BTUs it produces. We're gonna take all that data, multiply it by the square root of pi, because pi is always very good, and then we have our results, which we roll into a highly entertaining YouTube video. All right, now that we have our methodology explained, let's get to her. And here we have it, our smorgasbord of natural kindlings. Let me go through them. I want you guys to try and think about which one might burn the best in your minds. Starting off, we have white pine pine cones right here. This one in particular, absolutely saturated in pine gum. Got a piece of uh, red pine bark, mosses and old man's beard. We have some red pine pine cones different types of needles here from uh, white pine, cedar, and spruce. On this branch, that's where we collected the uh, balsam uh, sap, the ever popular uh, birch bark. We've got some spruce branches, and of course our dried out ferns. So, which one is going to be the champion? Let's start burning stuff. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I also have a big ball of pine gum. Looking forward to burning that. All right, first up we have our ferns, bunch them all up. Let's give it a light, see what happens. So it lights instantly. Catches pretty well. There we go. And they're gone. Next up, we're gonna try our balsam sap. Do it now because I don't want I don't want it to uh, drip away. So let's see what happens. Lights instantly, and we've got a mini torch. You can see the really really dark smoke. That's the um, those are the oils and stuff that are in the sap. Yeah, we do have some uh, um, burning of the wood here. So if we had fire built on top of this, this would be great. Okay, let's go through the various needles we collected, starting with our spruce needles. They lit pretty much instantly too. Holding a good flame. We're at just over two minutes and the flame is just now starting to die out. You can see too some hot coal in here, so if we had more more kindling on there, we'd have a nice fire going. 
Up next, cedar. It's not catching as well as the spruce did. I had to keep the lighter there a little bit longer, but as soon as it catches, it's roaring into flames now. And it's out. So it didn't spread as well as the spruce, that's for sure. And the last of our needles, white pine needles. So they light instantly, yep. Flame is slowly spreading. Not as good as spruce needles though, that's for sure. And it's out. Okay, let's move on to the barks that we have. I've only got two different types of bark collected. This is from a red pine tree. You can see uh, red pine, you often see their kind of flaky little bits coming off. So this is nice and thin. I thought we'd give it a try. Now we have the birch bark that we'll try next. Come on. So I had to hold the lighter there for a little bit longer than some of the other things we've tried and we had a flame for a little bit but it's already gone out. And yeah, see we just have to keep the lighter there a lot longer but if you're you're if, if you're in a bind and you need something that'll burn, I mean this will burn, you just need to keep your lighter there a little longer than some of the other ones. Okay, here's our birch bark. So we all know that this is a common fire starter. This comes from the white birch. There's other types of birch as well. They're, all the barks are uh, quite effective at starting a fire. It's a substance called betulin inside the birch bark that uh, makes it very water resistant and also highly flammable. I chose a small piece here because I know this will burn for a while just from experience and I don't want to be sitting here forever. So uh, we're going to just lay a small piece. So it lit instantly. And I'll set it down and we'll just watch it burn for the next hour. <laughs> this piece of birch bark's been burning for over five minutes now. It's just now starting to go out. You can see the whole thing has turned into ash pretty much. Still a last little bit of flame here. So yeah, uh, a piece of birch bark about the length of my index finger burned for, I think we're at five and a half minutes now. There it is, it's out. Next, I was going to burn both of these together, just mosses and lichens together, but I think we'll do them separate. So we have old man's beard here and then some sort of lichen. Uh, we'll start with the lichen. So it's not catching as fast as some of the other things we've tried, but as soon as it does catch, we've now got a nice flame. Burning through it all pretty quickly though, similar to I think like the ferns. So it's a very papery substance, I guess not quite as dense as some of the other substances. Has a nice odor. Hmm, interesting. Kind of uh, floral. There we have it. Lichen did a decent job. So lichen surprised me a little bit. It took a little while for the, the lighter, the flame from the lighter to catch, um, but it burned a lot longer than I expected. We're looking at almost 45, 50 seconds. So yeah, what's that, eh, Jasper? And now we'll try the old man's beard. Got two little pieces here, we'll bunch them up. So it lights instantly and Oh, flame actually went under. Caught me by surprise there. Got a nice flame, but it's burning through this really fast. And the main piece is out. It's all out. But again, good fire starter if you're in a pinch. Now we're going to do the pine cone. This is from a red pine. Pretty thick, and there's no gum or any kind of residue on there at all. So I don't think this is going to be an ideal candidate to start a fire.
Okay, so I had to leave the lighter there a little bit longer than some of the other ones we've tried, but we do get a flame. Obviously not the best fire starter, but definitely works if you need to, and if it's the only thing you can find. On to our next type of pine cone. This is from a white pine. So I'm going to try it twice. Uh, this one is kind of an older one. You can see there's probably um, a couple of these bristles here that have a bit of pine gum on it. And the rest is fairly plain, like this side here, there's nothing at all. So I just want to see how well this will light. I've got the lighter on one of the pieces that has some of the pine gum. Yeah, it's, I think the, I think the pine cone's woody texture is too thick. So as soon as that pine gum is burned away, it just goes out. Okay, let's try one more. This one, uh, the next one we're trying is just covered in resin. Okay, white pine pine cone number two. You can see this one's covered in resin. I bet you this one's gonna light a lot easier than the last one. Let's give it a shot. I've got it on a stick just because I don't wanna get my hands all full of pine gum. It lit instantly, it's like a torch. Bring it in a little closer if you can see all the pine gums turning liquid. You can even see some of it dripping to the ground. That's the substance that's burning right now. And then you can see uh, on the edges of the pine cone here, we're actually getting some ember as well, which is great to keep a fire going after, uh, after the pine gum is gone. Next, we have a ball of pure pine gum. So this thing's huge. I mean, look at it, that's in the palm of my hand. I know if I lit this, it would burn for a solid 20 minutes easily maybe longer. So I'm just gonna break a little piece off because this stuff, um, I like to keep it when I find it. Never know when you might need some. Um, so just for demonstration purposes, I'll cut off, you know, maybe a quarter of this and we'll see how long that burns for. Everybody ready? Let's do this. Lit instantly already see the top becoming a bit liquid you can see those little firework type uh, reactions from the flame and this is just going to keep burning and dripping and burning and dripping so I'm going to set it down and we're just going to see how long this burns for remember this is the small piece of pine gum that we have We just, what we're seeing here is actually part of the process to make pine tar, where you would uh, heat pine wood at really high temperatures, but you don't actually let it catch fire. This is the exact same thing. I mean, I know we did let it catch fire, but what you're left with is that tar type substance. And uh, they used to use this hundreds of years ago on their ships and boats as uh, a water resistant material. So same idea here. Well, there we have it guys. Let me know in the comments what you think of today's great experiment. Uh, fun little trial to, uh, to go through. I think for me, the pine gum is definitely the winner, hands down. After that, the birch bark. And um, I mean, all the substances performed quite well. I'd be more than happy to find any of those if I was in a survival situation. I have my preferences, of course, but beggars can't be choosers. If you're lost, you're gonna take what you can find. All right, this is Eric, Greybeard Adventures. Thanks for tuning in. Again, let me know in the comments what you thought about today's uh, fun little experiment. All right, cheers, everybody.